Hi there, and welcome to the sixth Dread Delusion Dev Diary. This time, I'm going to be slicing open the bloated corpse of Dread Delusion to reveal its slimy innards. Although, its inner workings actually look like this, which is probably a lot less exciting than how I made it sound. Most of the ideas for the game originated from obscure doodles in my sketchbooks. Luckily, I have an almost compulsive need to jot down rambling nonsense about made-up places, so there's always a lot of ideas to pull from. Dread Delusion started as an experiment in making a tiny RPG. Early drafts saw the game as a walking sim with RPG elements, or even a Game Jam style riff on a tiny Final Fantasy world, but the game has grown into a much larger project. Anyone who remembers the haunted PS1 demo disc version of the game will know that it was entirely set in the Clockwork Kingdom at first, and the game started with an audience with the Clockwork God. The mechanics of this early version were much more lightweight, with plenty of places being represented by choose-your-own-adventure-style destinations. But since getting funding with Dread XP, I decided to create all the spaces in full 3D, with every character having something to say. With this new focus, I fleshed out the region of Hallowshire as a completely new start for the game, and which introduced the concept of gods as these fallible, very real beings who are far from omnipotent. This was somewhat inspired by real pagan dealings with gods, in which the foundations of contract law were established with the way people bartered with their deities. Meanwhile, the extra budget meant I could share the writing load with others. The Endless region is entirely penned by Harry, the creator of House of Many Doors and an excellent scribe of ghoulish things, while the Clockwork Kingdom is being resurrected and completely rewritten by I.O., who is one of the most talented writers I know. This is all made possible by a bespoke dialogue system that was made by a coder Greg and allows for complex branching dialogue paths. As for the terrain of the world, this is almost entirely created in Blender, which is a free 3D program. I'm so used to the application that I can sketch up terrain pretty quickly, and the low poly art style means it's really easy to go back and edit features without undoing too much of your work. For the buildings, I tend to create modular sets in Blender. Most of the houses are all part of one 3D model, with elements that are toggled on and off to create different types of structures. As development has progressed, these houses have gotten increasingly more complex, with the Clockwork Kingdom prefab structures being some of the most intricate I've made to date. But one of the most striking aspects of Dread Delusion is its incredible monsters and character designs. Most of the strange creatures in the game are entirely the work of Hein, a fantastic 3D modeler that I greatly enjoy working with. I supply the vaguest of briefs and receive the strangest, most bizarre concepts in return, so we obviously run with the most bizarre of them all. The human characters are all created by Cody. I tend to have more specific briefs for these, as some of them are important to the storyline, but Cody is exceptionally talented at turning designs into wonderful low-poly models. We've made a bunch of modular sets too, which allow the NPCs in the various towns to all look unique, despite them all being part of the same 3D model. The open world itself is all one big consistent scene. I've made a levels of detail system to crunch distant assets down to much less performance intensive versions. While a far cry from the complex technology used in bigger budget games, I would enjoy the simplicity of our system and how it evokes the clunky but effective graphics systems found in much older open world games. I also have much more assistance on the editor side now. Aaron is our newest recruit. She's fleshing out whole new levels and is far more competent with all this unity malarkey than myself. As for audio, we now have Lazzie sculpting the soundscapes of the game, whose expert work backed her an IGF award for her work on Paratopic. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dan continues to work on the game's incredible soundtrack, which I know has been enrapturing players with its haunting melodies for some time now. Oh, and the journal system is a particular favourite of mine. I sketched concepts of it as this clunky, grimdark thing reminiscent of old game UIs, and then our artist Matt brought it to life in all its pixelated glory. I love how it reflects the design mentalities of yesteryear, with games like Warcraft 3 having these tangible, detailed menus that really look like you could reach out and touch them. I totally understand why modern design favours a cleaner, more minimalist look, but I still really vibe with these retro UI styles. Another thing I miss from older games is beautifully designed item artwork. 
These days, you get a lot of boring lists of text, but I loved old RPGs where every item had a unique visual look. So we recruited our item artist, Gatto, to turn my hasty pencil doodles into genuine works of art. I think you'll agree that they really bring the game to life. Some of these items were also rendered in full 3D by our modeler, Laura. It was particularly impressive to see her create the transforming clockwork weapons. I sketched these really complex and intricate designs that must have been an absolute nightmare to interpret, but the end result is better than I could have ever hoped for. And with that, I think we'll conclude our behind the scenes tour of Dread Delusion. I think you'll agree that we've got an absolutely fantastic team of developers and freelance artists, and I must say it's a true privilege to work with them all. I should also mention that this video only scratches the surface of all the hard work that's going into the game, and there's definitely potential to take a deeper dive into the makings of Dread Delusion if that's something people are interested in. But for now, thanks for watching, and peace out.